Well, and, uh, uh, so now, now that I do have a race. That's crazy. One thing that, you know, and again, you guys um, uh, uh, can uh, leave as this goes on. Uh, feel free. Uh, but uh, one thing I did, before you did leave, I want to talk about in, in terms of the index model. We ended talking about the index model on uh, what were the problems with it. In other words, we were going to use the index model to uh, estimate the parameters for our Markowitz uh, you know, optimal risky portfolios. And we said, uh, because we can, uh, using the index model, we can estimate the covariance between two stocks, return on stock I, return on stock J is just going to be the beta on stock I, beta stock A, variance of the market. And because we can have actual analysts give us estimates of these betas, these should be better covariance estimates than if we uh, were to estimate each, um, let's say, individually on much better than using historical data, but this is a, this is a good way, an accurate way to estimate uh, covariances to then input into the Markowitz optimal portfolios. But we ended the class saying, well, there's some, there was some problem with this. This is the, the index model we're using here is the return on stock I is alpha, uh, beta on stock I, return on the market plus an error. Term. And what was the problem that we, that we said with this? If this is true, then this is an excellent way to estimate the covariances. But it, is it possible that this isn't true? You said last class, uh, the problem with this is industry effects. So one thing I just wanted to point out before I do a simple, um, uh, i show you simply what happens uh, when we construct a portfolio and we model stock by the index model. But so let's say the problem with this is if, uh, there are industry effects, and we do not take them into account. We say uh, we can just decompose or return on any stock I to the, that attributable from the market, uh, expected that attributable from the market, and that attributable to firm-specific risk. These two are uncorrelated, right? They're, they're orthogonal to each other. So if there are industry effects, we're not taking into account the model. So if we were to estimate this model, let's say for, uh, let's say, ExxonMobil and uh, let's say BP. So if we were to estimate these two and then calculate the covariance between ExxonMobil and BP using the index model, would it be accurate? In other words, these should have a fairly substantial correlation. And the correlation is due to industry effects. So in other words, if we what will happen, and this is, this is something for you to know, don't worry about, like, on any, you know, don't worry about uh, quantifying this on an exam or so forth. But if this is, if this, if we estimate this model for both Exxon and BP, what's going to happen is our error terms are going to be correlated between these two stocks because we're not taking into account the industry effects. So, in other words, um, if this is a proper model, should the error terms be, be correlated? No, the error terms shouldn't be correlated. Uh, but because we're, we're, we're leaving out industry effects, the error terms will likely be correlated. And I, maybe I should give a, a homework assignment on that, where uh, I can actually just say, you know, calculate the market model for these two, and then see if we can find something that has an, uh, a correlation in the error term. Uh, that would be interesting. Uh, now, the question is, where, so there's correlation in this error term. Does that come into play here? Nothing in here includes a correlation in an error term. Right? So in other words, if we were to use this methodology to calculate the covariance, this index model methodology to calculate the covariance, and there's actually industry effects that we're leaving out that cause correlation in the error term, will this understate or overstate the, co the correlation, the covariance? Understate. Understate, absolutely. And when we construct Markowitz portfolios, do we like low or high correlations? Low. Low. Uh, so in other words, this will understate, this will say, Put these two, this, this will make it more likely for you to put both of these in your portfolio. Whereas actually going with and calculating some sort of covariance, just going through the, the um, historical data, uh, which again is not a, not a great thing to do, but you're, you're going to find that the actually calculating the covariance will give you a higher covariance than using this. So in other words, if you use the index model in an appropriate scenario, it will make it more likely, you know, if you use it where there should be 
industry correlation, but you're not including it in this index model such that the error terms are correlated, that error is going to, that mistake is going to make you more likely to put those two stocks in your portfolio. Does that make sense? Good. So uh, one thing is I just wanted to talk quickly about the effect of um, not including industry effects and how that will affect your portfolio construction. Uh, it, and then if you do, uh, that will affect your weights. It, it's going to it, then making this error is going to tend to say have too much weight in here, and that's going to obviously make your uh, portfolio not optimal. So in other words, there's a lot of benefit in terms of uh, computations, in terms of, uh, of you know getting these betas from analysts. So there's a lot of benefit to using an index model. The cost is well to the extent that there's something that we're not including in our index model, um, you know, that is going to be a cost in non-optimal weights, where this is the actual thing that we would want to use. Uh, good. Yes. Then the rest, the only thing I, uh, I'm going to do right now quickly is uh, show the effect of diversification on the index model. So uh, that won't take but a second, but this is the part that you can watch online. Uh, because in reality, it's purely mechanical. Uh, so, index model. Return on stock I uh, equal to alpha I plus beta I. Return on the market plus the error term. If we create a, a portfolio. So, what, we, what I just want to show is that if we create a portfolio of stocks, what we're going to see is the error term goes away. Uh, so, now, if the portfolio is large enough, we can just approximate the weights of all the stocks in the portfolio. Uh, we'll, we can approximate the weights by saying, all right, the weight on every stock is just 1 over n. The weight on every stock in the portfolio uh, is approximated by 1 over n. Then the return on the portfolio is just 1 over n. This is just weight times the return on each, um, on each individual stock in the portfolio. Uh, 1 over n uh, sum alpha sub i plus 1 over n. Uh, sum beta sub i return on the market plus 1 over n e squared. <coughs> so we can we can just say rewrite this as this is the, the this is the return on the portfolio. Again, this is just weight of the return on stock i. Uh, the weight of stock i comes the return on stock i. Weight of stock j comes the return on stock j, and so forth. This will be um, the return on our portfolio. This is just uh, the portfolio alpha. This is just uh, the average, so again, in, in this also comes from earlier classes, the beta is just a uh, beta of your portfolio, it's a weighted average of the betas in your portfolio. So we have the beta of the portfolio times the return on the market, uh, plus you know, we have this error term sitting out here, E sub i. Now, using uh, that, and I, I should have mentioned this last class when I used it, just to remind you, but remember, um, if we have the variance of A, X plus B, where A and B are constants and X is a random variable, this is equal to A squared variance of B. Ah, sorry, A squared variance of X. So simply using that and the fact that this beta is constant, we can say the variance of the portfolio is equal to Beta squared of the, uh, the, the uh, beta squared of portfolio times the variance of the market plus I'll say variance of one over n sum e sub i. This obviously this this is the proportion of the the the, the variance of the por uh, portfolio that will not uh, be affected by diversification. However, the question is what happens to uh, the second term there? as n gets larger and larger and larger. Uh, to see this, so briefly looking at this, uh, I'll have to erase up here because I don't have too much board. The idea is using the same, uh, using this, the same uh, uh, result from probability that, that I did here, you can sit there and go, okay, well, uh, the variance, 1 divided by n, sum e sub i, the e sub i, the correlation between every uh, error term is, is zero. Again, this is the assumption of the index model. If there are industry effects uh, that aren't taken into account, this won't hold. Uh, however, assuming zero correlation between any of the uh, uh, firm-specific terms, this is going to be equal to 1 over n squared uh, uh, sum of error term variances. 
which I can rewrite simply as 1 over n times 1 over n uh, sum sigma squared e, I should, e, I should have e sub i. And this is simply equal to 1 over n average uh, variance of the firm specific terms. As n approaches infinity, this approaches, of course, 0. So in other words, uh, this term here, uh, this term equals 1 over n average variance of the error term, which as, you know, writing through, a, as n approaches infinity, this approaches 0. So the idea is as uh, we have more and more stocks in our portfolio, the uh, return on the, 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 the variance of our portfolio will become closer and closer to simply this term here. And that's just the result of uh, diversification. So uh, without talking about Markowitz, without uh, anything further, simply from the index model, we can show the effect of diversification. The nice thing is this gives us a little bit of a way to um, uh, measure how quickly diverse, uh, how quickly uh, we should see the effect of diversification in our portfolios. And then the next thing is just to actually to estimate index models. Good. All right. So now I got us to the point where we can do index models uh, next class.